Aloha, guys, and welcome back to Degree Free. We are your hosts, Ryan and Hannah Mariama. On this podcast, we share fundamentals we've discovered and the mistakes we've made while self-educating, getting work, building businesses, and making money. We'll tell you how to make it happen. No degree needed. Welcome back to the podcast, everybody. We are extremely happy to have you. Uh, If you have not heard about this, we have a newsletter and it comes out once a week and it is awesome. There's a bunch of cool stuff in there. There are things like different jobs that are really friendly to degree-free people, degree-free news, like changes to apprenticeship or different companies that are rolling back their degree required policies. You're going to want to see that. And then also we tend to include resources that uh, Ryan and I use that we find really helpful in our degree-free journey and for our businesses as well. So there's just a bunch of cool stuff in there and you are going to want to sign up because you don't want to miss it. Uh, And then also if you could like and subscribe to the podcast, we'd really appreciate that. And if you want to grab the newsletter, head on over to degreefreenetwork.com and sign up. Yeah. So let's get into it. Today, we're going to be talking about how to stay motivated while applying. It's a doozy. It's like really difficult. It's, it is one of the hardest things as an adult that you can do. <laughs> super, super difficult. And it's something that we get a lot and it's something that we've experienced a lot mm-hmm. also. So we just figured it's something good to talk about. When you're applying, I think the very first thing that we have to remember is that on average, it takes 100 applications just to get an interview. This is for, this is the national average people. This is for everybody. Now that sounds like a really large number. The reason why that sounds like a large number is because it is. (laughs) It's obnoxious. People were not saying it's right, but that is how it is right now. Yeah. And I think if you get that number in your mind to at least give you that kind of point of reference, it allows you to be a little bit easier on yourself because what we're talking about here is really the motivation factor is really just the self-talk that you have and the stories that you tell yourself in your head Mm -hmm. while you're applying. And it's difficult. You're out there for days, weeks, months for a lot of people and you're constantly receiving emails that says you haven't been chosen for this position. You haven't even gotten an interview. We're not talking about dealing with rejection We're just talking about how to stay motivated when applying. Yep. You know? And it's one of those things that if you remember a hundred applications for one interview, that really helps to just keep it in perspective. Yeah, because I see people uh, and it's I, a lot of it, I think, are recent college graduates where I see them make videos about they're in the depths of despair and they're crying because they can't get a job. And then I'm, lo- you know, I'll ask sometimes or I'll look in the comments to see how many times they apply, like how many jobs they applied to. And sometimes it's like seven. I'm like, kid, you are not even on the board like you, you you don't even exist right now. Like you are not playing the game until you put in like 200 to 300 job applications. Then you can start to worry if something is wrong with your resume. Like maybe you need to tweak your resume or whatever, whatever, whatever. You need to add some additional skills. But for most people, they're throwing a fit before they even get to 100. And I'm like, yeah, that's just how many, that's what you got to do in order to get, you know, in order to get an interview at all. And I think for a lot of people too, um, they don't realize that they're being too picky with the amount of companies that they're applying to. They're applying to like four companies and then they're not getting, they're not hearing anything back or they get rejection and they're, they're all woe is me now. And it's just the frame of reference. Like it takes a hundred applications to get one interview on average. So don't get discouraged if you are below a hundred, <laughs> like you, you're not, you're not even playing yet, you know? Yeah, it's a numbers game. It's a numbers game. It really is. And I think you you did touch on something that is important, especially going forward, is that your resume and your application and the things that are on your resume and the way that it's formatted, that definitely plays a role in it. I mean, it definitely does. Um, and you're going to want to, as best as possible, tailor your resume 
for the job that you're applying for. And this is kind of outside of the scope of this podcast, but just really quickly, you know, if you're applying to, you know, three different types of roles in a company or at different companies rather, you know, then you should have three different resumes for each one of those. So an example would be like, if you're applying to be a customer service person, or if you're applying to be a salesperson, or if you're applying to be a marketing person, you should have three resumes for that. But that's, like I said, that's a little outside of the scope of this, but just, yes, definitely the way that you format your resume has an impact. That being said, generally speaking, if your resume is already good, we're assuming that your resume is good to go. We're assuming that you're tailoring it. We're assuming that you're just now applying. Mm -hmm. You've just got to apply and you just have to keep hitting that apply button as much as possible. Yep. And, you know, don't be spammy, but apply. Yep. Apply as a lot of places because you need you need to get numbers. That's, right. That's what you got to do. And, you know, if you think that I think one of the keys here, too, and, and I've, fall, I've fallen victim to this, is that even if it doesn't seem like you're a perfect fit for the role, you should still apply. Mm -hmm. You might get it. You might not. Chances are you're not going to get it, right? I mean, if it takes 100 applications, chances are you're not going to get it. Yep. That being said, if you do, then you got it. That's one. Mm -hmm. But also you might get a call back for a different role that that recruiter or that HR manager is like, okay, well, you're not a perfect fit for this role, but what about this role? Mm -hmm. And that happens all the time, Yep. right? And you just need, how is that HR manager or how is that recruiter supposed to know that you're looking for work without you telling them that you're looking for work right. in the form of applying to the job? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and one of the big things to, to keep in mind when applying is that for most people, you only need one yes. Yep. And there's a lot of people who I think are too, too picky also about uh, the jobs they're applying for. And they, they get down because they're not getting the results that they want. They're not getting yeses from like the like I said, the 10 companies they applied to. But the thing is, you got to keep in perspective that you need work. If you, if you need a job, you need work and you need a yes. And so you need to be open to getting that yes from anywhere you apply to. And you really need to broaden the spectrum of companies you're willing to apply to in order to get that yes. Yeah, definitely. Um, and what more what I was saying is just that like past every no is a possibility of a yes, mm -hmm. right? Like you're going to have to run through the nose in order to get, eventually get a yes. Yeah. And like I was saying, for most people, you're just looking for one job. And so when they say yes, that's where you're going to stop. Um, but, you know, some people need two jobs or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then you just keep going though. Um, ha having those two things in mind definitely helps to kind of depersonalize it right because i think a lot of what people get into is like oh is something wrong with me is something wrong with my resume is something wrong with the way that i'm approaching this probably not no yeah oftentimes not probably not no it's probably just you don't have the numbers yeah. it's just a numbers game yep and that just really helps to Think about it in that way. Mm -hmm. You need over a hundred to get one interview. That's not to get a job. That's to get an interview. Yes. And then that interview, okay, you get rejected. Now you. Now you need another hundred. You need another hundred to get a chance. It's crazy. Yeah. And it's a weird job market right now. We keep saying it, but it's true. Yeah. It's just wild. Like there's just no, you know, there, I, I feel like at this point too, there's like equal chance of you getting hired on the first shot as you getting hired on the 200th shot. Like it's so weird. And, and then there's also the timing too. Like if you, if you are applying towards the tail end of the open applications, right. And there's 200 applicants ahead of you, the likelihood of you getting that job now is really low. Right. So that one almost doesn't even count as a full application because of the timing of your application. And it's easier for people to apply now than it ever has been. 
So you have to keep that in mind as well too. If you are looking at a job that's highly publicized, especially one that's like on LinkedIn or something, you, you got to look at how many people are applying ahead of you too. I think that does matter as well. Yeah, definitely. One of the things that's going to help us, I mean, it's helped us in the past and I think help most people is making a schedule just like everything else that we suggest, right? And just kind of remembering that it's a marathon and not a sprint. And I know that for a lot of people listening, you could be unemployed and you could be, you're like, Frick, I need work. Now. I need work now. But, you know, if you, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't hit the ground running. You absolutely should. If you lose your job suddenly, you need to hit the ground running. Get in the game. Yeah. That being said, okay, realistically, how many applications do you think you can put in in a day? The application burnout is real. Um, too, because if you're if you're putting in you know hundreds a day, well you you're probably going to get results from that. You're also going to get burned out doing that really quick. You can probably only do that for a week, and then you're you're not going to be able to mentally you're not going to be able to deal. Exactly. Yeah. So that's exactly what I was thinking. That's exactly what I do, and exactly what I've done, and exactly what I suggest people do. Which is at the very beginning of it, I think that one of the best approaches is taking a front loaded approach especially if you are unemployed. So what I mean by that is that when you first realize that you want to get a new job and you're going to start applying, okay, if you know the numbers, if you know that it's going to be 100 in order to get an interview, well, then you probably want to get to that 100 as quick as possible. Mm -hmm. And so you can say, all right, I'm going to do 20 applications for five days mm-hmm. right 20 applications a day for five days or i'm going to do 50 applications one day which that's a lot that is a lot it's if you're doing it on linkedin it's much more achievable oh well, yeah i mean if you're apply. doing easy apply yeah I'm, I'm thinking not doing easy apply ah uh, yeah but, that would be a lot but yes if you're doing if you're just doing easy apply on linkedin then I mean, you're just spamming a button that right it's easy mm-hmm. but i'm just thinking about not doing easy apply i'm thinking about doing a cover letter and all that uh. which is takes a lot of time. Yeah. Right. But what I suggest is front loading the work. So getting to that, not that hundred as quickly as possible without blowing your brains out, mm-hmm. you know, without, <laughs> it's hard. Yeah. Without wanting to just like smash your head into the computer screen. Yeah. You know, and, and then from there though, you kind of go onto a maintenance dose. Yeah. Which is like, okay, now I have my hundred out there. Hope I have my hundred lines out there. Hopefully, I get one bite, and then I do like twenty or thirty on Sunday nights, and you know you do twenty on Monday nights if you're really ambitious. Exactly, and or you could just say I'm gonna do fifty a week. Yeah, I'm gonna do twenty five a week, and you can do them whenever. So you can do you can do fifty on Sunday. Uh, Sunday night's the best night to apply. Uh, it's been said. So y- the reason is because then Monday morning you're the first thing in the app in the in the recruiter's inbox, right? You're you're first, you're top of the pile. Um, but you could apply Sunday, you know, Sunday and Monday, or you could apply, uh, you know, Monday through Friday, and you just apply during business. I'd probably avoid applying on Fridays, but you can apply Monday through Friday and do ten a day. Well, that's kind of that's kind of m- more like application optimization Mm -hmm. of the days to apply i think at the beginning you need the numbers you need the numbers just Mm -hmm. do it yeah right and if it and if you got to do it monday through friday then do it Mm -hmm. right but it could also be nice that say if you want to do 50 a week sunday night you do 25 monday night you do 25 Mm -hmm. and then you're done for the whole week and that's what i was talking about a maintenance those is that i like to parse it out by week Mm -hmm. and then once you've hit that number stop yeah just stop put your applications away close down the computer don't look at linkedin again until you get a message about it about an interview yeah and then start it again the next week Mm -hmm. right because that's gonna help you to not get burnt out and stay motivated yeah you know right and you're trying to stay in the fight as long as possible Mm -hmm. because you need results right no, I think that that's a really good that's a really good way to look at it. Yeah. yeah. 
and and much more yeah much more sustainable for most people right yeah just not time boxing it but rather putting a quota mm-hmm. putting on a, how many you gotta do right uh exactly. i like that putting a quota on this is how many applications i want to do per week mm-hmm. and yeah like i said if you're if you're unemployed it's probably a little more urgent that you get a new job yes and you can put down more numbers than most people rather, that's all you're doing right rather than the person that's working and they're like okay i just want to see what else is out there mm-hmm. so if you're if you're already working and you don't really hate your job but you're just trying to see if you can up your pay right maybe your numbers are smaller mm-hmm. right and so maybe it's like i'm gonna do 10 a week mm-hmm. and i'm gonna do five on sunday night and i'm gonna do five on monday night yeah or if if that's too much on one night you'd be like i'm gonna do two a day for five days monday through friday mm-hmm. and just do it and so with all of that comes tracking yeah you got to keep track keeping track if you do keep accurate records and you keep it in it i suggest a spreadsheet yeah. guys um yeah just use excel or google sheets yeah. or whatever there are plenty of um if you look up like job search tracker there are plenty There's of templates templates out there that you could use and you know i think in the future we're probably going to make one for you guys yeah. we'll keep Where you, you can track time. responses and interviews and yes yeah. or no and when you applied and all that all that jazz yeah and using one of these sheets is going to be huge mm-hmm. it's a little depressing when you start to get into the hundreds and you're looking at the numbers you're like wow that's a lot of applications right <laughs> But to try to flip that on its head, it, it's actually great. I like to think of it as motivating. Right. Because you're like, okay, I know that I have a hundred and this is all based off of that number. Mm-hmm. Like I know that I have a hundred in there. I've had two interviews so far. Yep. I'm I'm more than I'm double. Ahead of percentage. Yeah, I'm ahead of the percentage. And you got to think of the applications too. Like you're increasing the surface area for you to get a job uh, interview. That's what it is. The more applications you have, the more likely it is you'll get an interview. Because like I said, how are companies supposed to know, how are HR and recruiters supposed to know that you're looking for a job without you telling them that you're looking for a job? They the can. more companies that you tell that you're looking for a job, the more chances you're getting hired. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So tracking it is super important. It allows you to see where you've been and see where you're going. It also, when you when your applications start getting into the hundreds, people are going to start coming out of the woodwork. Like yeah. your email, I mean, I, I hope this happens to you, but we've seen this happen with a lot of people. When you start getting into those numbers, I mean, you've experienced it personally. Yeah, it's it's once you get past a certain threshold. I think it's probably once I got past like two fifty or three hundred, I started to get responses. And sometimes you get responses from companies even that originally turned you down, which I've noticed is yeah. a thing. And you're just starting. You're starting to get people coming back to you, and then you're like, "What? What company is this? Mm-hmm. What?" And then like, also, a lot of times you can kind of deduce the company by the email address and by you know obviously the email signatures and stuff like that but you might not remember the job title yeah you might not remember what the job description was and then you're gonna look like a fool when you're interviewing for a job that you can't remember what it was called or what they need you to do right and especially if you've applied to xyz company and you've applied to seven different positions at xyz company yes yes but i've had that where i got through i got halfway through an interview and i i just didn't know and i couldn't find it this was a while back and i got halfway through an interview before i realized what i was interviewing for yeah it was crazy you know and you just have to like you if you ever do that you just have to ask the recruiter a lot of questions so that you can kind of cover it and see if they'll come out and say whatever it's for but that is very risky and i would not recommend doing that it was very dumb you know but sometimes you do so many applications and if you're not tracking you you just can't remember so. yeah so tracking is going to be not only if you look at it from the view that like okay i've got 200 in which means i should be getting an interview any day now if you not only look at it from that perspective, it can also help you practically by being a tracker and mm-hmm. keeping track of the things that you can't keep track of because you've put in 200 freaking applications. Right. Yeah. Right. And a little a little note about that. 
like you said, what there is a critical mass of applying where people start to contact you. Yeah. That's not to say that you can stop applying at that point. No, you need to, in fact, double down, keep going. Yeah, because it's working. Yeah, and now you can have more options too. It's working. Like you can be pickier, you can leverage, you know, you can leverage stuff. You can also, if you're if you're fielding three, you know, three interviews and you, you kind of can get a feel for which company you're most interested in and it'll just help you feel like you're more competitive too because you're going to have two other people after you, which is good. So anecdotally, you would say that number, like just to keep people motivated and to kind of give them a... I think it's probably 300. 300 or so. Or more. Yeah. It's a lot. Yeah. It it is it is a lot people. Uh, I've I've definitely um n- not originally my uh, I think that when I first transitioned from um from te- from sales into tech uh m- my it was very easy, but it is a wildly different job market from the one that I I went into. Wildly different. And so now, yeah, you got to put numbers on the board. You know, one of the things that like I kind of want to talk about because when I hear 300, I'm like, really? 300? I think that's low. People even. are just like, how do you even get to that number? <laughs> like, what, like, like, you know, it just seems like a, a number that's it's a fake number. Well, you know what it is too, though, is, is you're assuming that, I think people are assuming that 300 of them are successfully received and looked at by a recruiter, but they're not. The reason the number is so high is because the hiring system is broken. But what I wanted to, what, what, my, what I'm asking is more like, how do you get to that number? <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, this is just so, time, right? So, yeah, time. I would say that it's probably at this point, too. I'm pretty good at it. So, I'm good at... I know which roles are going to look at me. I know which resume structure is going to be attractive to them because of which experience I'm like, this experience is relevant to this position. And so I'll, I know what resume, cause I've tailored resumes specifically to specific jobs that of, of titles I've previously had. So if I'm applying for this specific title, I send them this resume and I know that the likelihood of success in this, you know, in this resume category and in this type of company and um, at this level of application. So like if there's six other applicants and I put my application in, my odds are way higher, right, of getting a response. Whereas if I'm the 127th applicant on a job that I'm not really super relevant for, I, that one's kind of a wash because it's like, it's unlikely they'll call me back, right? So you just have, you just have to like, you just have to put up numbers. So I can get to the point now where um, you come up with a few different job titles that you know that you can frequently search like on Google and on LinkedIn and you know that you have solid resumes for those jobs and then you make sure that you're putting it up putting up a certain amount of numbers on the board for each one every week. Right. So I could easily do 50 applications in a night, you know, on LinkedIn um, and then probably another 20 off off of LinkedIn at this point if I'm really trying. And so I think for a lot of people, um, they just have to they just have to know that in order to get that amount up, you just have to, like you said, make a schedule, stick to it, know which categories you're strong in applications, and then um, know which resume to submit so that there's relevant application, you know, information for the recruiter so they're more likely to call you back. Awesome. I think what I was trying to say was that I, you need time. <laughs> that's what I. Yeah, yeah. That's what I was trying to say. Yeah, it take it took it took like two months to get. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but two months of doing that. No, that was super good. That was super. Yeah. that was but, super relevant. Yeah, it took months. That was it like took two months. It was like I was trying to like fish for something, and then like. It's like it's like one of your it's like when your history teacher is like, and who was the and 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 you're like, oh, I know, but you don't know the answer. Yeah, to I was trying to like asking. throw you a softball, and I was like expecting no. it to be hit back to me. I mean, I did. Yeah, you did. You hit it out of the park. I did. Thank you. You hit it out of the park. That's. I wasn't expecting you to hit it out of the park. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Two months. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yes. Exactly. We, which is interesting, actually. One of the little side fact. Um, Ooh, a side fact. My favorite type of fact. Yeah. Well, the for all those unemployed out there now, um, the average unemployment as of November 2021, the average length. It's like 29 weeks now. Holy cheese. That yeah. is a lot. And so... I didn't even know that. It's uh, tough. It's tough. 
guys, the system, the system is broken. It doesn't mean you can't still work in it and operate in it, but it's bad. It's just, there's just no way around. And I think acknowledging that probably helps too, because a lot of people are just like, it's me. There's something wrong with me. And it's like, no, not really. It's just a really wild. It's just, there's a lot of factors at play. They're very difficult. They're very complex. There's problems with the hiring systems people use. There's problems with, honestly too, right now, a lot of the recruiters are way overworked and they are they are just like not they're not operating at peak efficiency because they're just getting thrown to the wolves and there's been like record res- resignations of recruiters because their work environment is so bad so like there's a lot that's going into this right now too um and then there's just the rise of remote work too as now there's different times there's just all these different things that are happening all at once and then there's still a ton of people resigning from jobs but then there's like a massive surplus of jobs but in the tech industry, there's also an explosion of new roles and so much so that like a lot of the roles don't really have defined requirements for their characteristics. So they're putting in new recruiters who don't know how to assess people to assess roles that there aren't even defined responsibilities for in addition to the broken like general like hiring software. So there's just a lot of problems all at once. And so I just think people should know you're going in like it's kind of a it's kind of a war you're going into like you're going into a battlefield here you got to like pick up your sword and get ready to fight because it's hard to get a job but it's hard to apply for jobs it's not really hard to get a job um but just keep in mind that 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 is against you but that's not showing that you are not that you're not a good candidate. It just means that you're not being effective at applying, you know, and, and the way to be effective is just to put up numbers. The reason why I brought up the 29 weeks was that I just wanted people to kind of know that. And so that the more information, the better. And especially if you lose your job suddenly, don't be discouraged by that 29 weeks. You're in week one. Mm-hmm. You lose your job now. You're in week one. Yeah, and now you you have the opportunity to beat the average, right? You have the opportunity to get a job at next week, and the way that you're going to do that is you're going to apply, and you're going to stay motivated while applying. Yep. Right. And yeah, as Hannah's saying, it takes two months to get uh, up to 300, where people start calling you. You know, maybe you maybe you're trying to get up to 300 now. Within right. the next couple of weeks. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And then you keep doing that rolling application like Ryan was saying. Yeah. Then you just keep your numbers up as the weeks go on. Yeah. But um, yeah, I just that's, that's why I brought it up just to so people can stay motivated with, okay, this is this is normal. Mm-hmm. It's week six and I haven't got and I haven't got a job yet. And, you know, when once you start reaching those later weeks of the job hunt, this is when this episode is really going to come into play Yeah, because it is tough. Mm -hmm. It is tough. And so now that you've got your system down, now that you're tracking and everything like that, and you're doing it Sunday, Monday or Monday through Friday, whatever your system is, whatever you've decided, and you're in week six, week seven, week eight of the job hunt. Now you're like, holy moly, I am tired. Mm -hmm. I am sick and tired of applying to these jobs yeah it's pointless nobody reads them nobody sees it nothing's happening and that's when you have to really take care of yourself Mm -hmm. and you have to have other things going on outside of applying to the jobs in order to feel like you have a win on the day yeah right so if that's going working out every day doing yoga, going for walks with your wife, your kids, your dog, your dog, whatever. Um, if that's, you know, reading a book, Mm -hmm. doing something that you like that that makes you feel good. Yeah. That doesn't ideally preferably not gaming I, I will say that preferably something that's not also on the computer it's you got to get away from the screens from a little bit for a little bit because it's just too much yeah i was gonna say the same thing yeah ideally you want to do something that involves people mm-hmm. because the uh, applying to jobs is very very lonely mm-hmm. because only you can do it i mean you can have other people do it actually yeah you could have other people apply but for you most people 99 percent of people are gonna do it themselves yeah and 
because you're doing it yourself and it's just you and the computer screen and the mouse and the keyboard for hours every day or for however long and you're now in the eighth, sixth week of doing it, you're going to want to have something to look forward to, ideally with other people, Mm -hmm. you know. Seconded. Uh, whether whether or not that's dinner or uh you know whatever mm-hmm. um working out really helps to it it does yeah physical movement yeah it's very easy to be depressed during these times it's very easy to start feeling down because you might not even be hearing rejection at this point you're just silence you're literally hearing nothing because at least in interviews, most interviews, you 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 get rejected. You get an answer. Yeah, you'll get an answer. Yeah. But when you're applying, a lot of times you don't get an answer at all. No. And it's just like you throw it out in the ether and you don't receive any feedback. And that's tough. Yep. You know, and that's yep. tough. And discouraging. Yeah, it's going to bust you down. Yep. And it, it will. And you could be a really mentally strong person, but it, it, it is going to it is gonna wear you. It's going to grind you down. It is. For sure. So you just have to keep, you just have to keep your head up and keep the, keeping the numbers in mind really helps because then you're like, okay, it's not, you know, it's not me, it's this and it's just numbers and I just got to keep going. And then, you know, after you're taking care of your body and your soul and your spirit by talking to people or Mm -hmm. working out, doing something that you enjoy, picking up a hobby, I think the next thing to do is you have to celebrate especially celebrating small wins Mm -hmm. because when you're in the second month of applying and it's like, what the heck? This is crazy. You know, when you do get an interview, instead of thinking about it, oh man, it's my eighth interview. You know what I mean? Like I haven't, nobody said yes yet. You know, instead think of it, think of it differently. Celebrate that you got the interview. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, Right on. That's awesome. Yeah, like high five your roommate or your spouse or yeah. your mom and dad or whatever. Yeah, you go. You know, do do a special lunch for yourself. Or it something. could be as small as not that it's th- there's there's downsides to using food as a reward, but sometimes though it's it's like a small inexpensive way to motivate yourself. So whatever, I get why people do it, yeah, and I get why I do. But you know, if it's it could be something as like I'm gonna go get a I'm gonna go get a McDonald's iced coffee for a dollar because instead of making coffee at home today because I got an interview. Like that's still a small form of celebration. That's fine. You know, if you, if you if that makes you feel like you got a little reward for doing something, then do it. <laughs> you know. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think. Um renting a movie or something that you want to watch. If you don't normally rent movies, you know, like tonight I'm going to rent like a Marvel movie to watch because, uh, I got an interview, you know, not even like, not even you got the interview and got the job, but you just got an interview, which is a breakthrough. But yeah. Celebrating the small wins. I think it's got to do it. It's necessary. It, in the, especially in the later. Time. In the slog. Right. <laughs> because in the first week or two, you're, you, you it's going to be all smiles. It's going to be okay. Mm-hmm. Right. You're like, oh, I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. Week four is you're just and like, then, there's, I'm going to be doing this forever. Yep. There's no end. I'm in the pit of despair. Yep. That's how it feels. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Alone by yourself. Yeah. I think that's it for today. Um, but yeah, definitely just don't get discouraged. Keep your head up. Um, make sure you're tracking your applications and make sure you're putting the right amount of numbers on the board so you can actually get results because that's what it really comes down to in this job market. Um, but yeah, it, please, please uh, go to degreefreenetwork.com and uh, sign up for our newsletter because we put a lot of valuable stuff, even even stuff like this, like ways, you know, ways where you can celebrate your wins. Um, we talk about different job application opportunities, uh, news, degree-free news, where we talk about companies that are prioritizing hiring degree-free, just cool stuff that you don't want to miss. And then make sure to like and subscribe to the podcast. That really helps us. And it helps people who are looking for it. And even though they don't know it yet. Yeah, definitely. Um, and if you guys have any uh, questions or just want to get in touch, uh, contact at degreefreenetwork.com. Drop us a line. Follow us on social media. She's at Hannah Mariama. I'm at Ryan K. Mariama. And uh, the podcast is at Degree Free Pod. Um, I think that's it, guys. Just remember, it's a numbers game. Mm-hmm. It's a numbers game when you're applying in your fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, 29th week, whatever week. You know, you just got to keep your head up 
remember that it only takes one person to say yes to you. It takes one person. Um, but yeah, keep it up, guys. I know you can do it. Um, until next time, guys. Aloha.